I think the very central part of Tabernacle Church was the sound Bible teaching. Mr. Dunlap himself, as Lawrence already said, was an artist with words. He had a way of taking the scriptures and making them live. And he certainly gave us a wonderful foundation in the Word of God, and that was carried on through the Sunday School and other ministries in the church. Um, he also brought in speakers. We were blessed mm -hmm. to have speakers come into Tabernacle Church from all over the world. For World Missions Week, we had the cream of the crop, as far as I'm concerned, of speakers that came and shared the word with us and shared the vision and came alongside of Mr. Dunlap with the same type of vision and enlarged it for us. I often said my children learned geography in Tabernacle Church from the um, um, films that the missionaries brought and the slides that they showed. Mr. Dunlap and Jean really felt, always felt that they were in need of revival, that, they, that God could mean more to them and God could mean more to us. So a revival was also to draw, to give us an opportunity to draw close to God. And so the people that were brought in, the, the speakers that were brought in, Mr. Dunlap had the gift again to reach out into the very heart of the world and bring in speakers that would speak to it. We heard uh, Dr. Tozer, he brought, he came here more than once and spoke to our people. We heard uh, Ian Thomas, um, I can't even think of the, the numbers of leaders, world leaders in the spiritual life in, that were brought here to speak to us. And it was always, God has a wonderful message. He wants, revival means getting more alive. And God wants to do that for us. And so we came to be brought into the warmth warmed, rewarmed, and we didn't feel like that the, that the pastoral staff was doing that for us, that we were doing that together, that they wanted to be warmed, they wanted to be drawn closer to the Lord, and that these speakers came with something special for every one of us, not just to bring lost people in, although yes, this is your opportunity to be involved in their lives, to bring them where God can touch them but that God wants to touch you. So we always came. We were here every day, every meeting. There would be morning meetings for women and evening meetings for the family. We came and we brought our children and everybody came. You didn't put your children with a babysitter. You didn't leave them home to get sleep. Everybody in the family needs to be revived. And so our children lined up in the seats with us or some of us were felt privileged to operate a nursery where we could bring the children under the Word of God, too. When we were meeting together, whoever came to prayer meeting, they'd work before, work afterwards. This was down on 25th Street. Uh, we had many dependents uh, come in, and we realized that that little group of people just rec rec were what John called succotash from the standpoint of denominations. We, we belonged to a missionary society, but we found, and the phrase came up, and it just became a part of the foundation. We gather together to share Jesus Christ. We come together, to all of us, to share Christ. And that was what I think was a germ that started the idea that TAB was always a neutral meeting place. When John would have speakers come in from all, everywhere, all over the world, they the people in the city knew they could come to TAB because it was neutral. It was not a denomination. And that, I think, is what spawned Youth for Christ and um, the schools and the ranch. And I think God has had his hand on all of that. Music was a very important part of the church. Music was a very important part of the ministry. It wasn't something that we added on to or that we just happened to think about last night. It wasn't there to entertain you. It was there to, to minister to you. And these two ladies behind me who led that music as a team for years, some with the piano, some with the organ, some with leading the choir, but never had any kind of jealousy with that, just as, as their husbands had set the example. 
And they had the choir, but it was a ministry to those choir folks, 20, 30 people, how many they were. And they really ministered to one another, but they also ministered to us in a godly fashion. There was a wholesomeness, there was a spirit of awesomeness in a church service. Church was a different place, and it was a holy place. And we were taught that, to the reverend that, and that everybody that had a part of that service came there with that one intent in mind, that we're here to worship the Lord and honor Him. And if it doesn't do those things, then we're about to question whether we ought to be doing it. And so music was just part of us. It wasn't something that was added on to or an afterthought. And let me tell you what a great example both John and Jean were of that unselfishness, but also with these two ladies.